Okay, I think we've got it. I'm hoping everybody can hear me and see the screen that says Wave Watch Hearing and Ear Problems. If uh, you can't, now's the time to let me know. It's perfect. All right, we're ready to go then. Um, I don't know if a lot of you uh, were on last time. We have a different mix of people each time, but I just so appreciate that you, you're coming. And today there's a special program for me, uh, hearing and ear problems, and it sounds kind of selfish, but I'm a deaf person. So I really learned a lot through developing the Wave Watch. And I thought maybe I'd share just a few ideas with you today. So of course I have to go through, we have a disclaimer, the Wave Watch offers low risk acoustical frequency products and their self care. We're not diagnosing anything. We are not uh, treating, curing or preventing any disease or medical condition. We have a self care tool that you are figuring out how to use yourself. Now there are listed names in our book, booklet of 850 different self care ideas and they use the names of disease only in relationship to the sound frequencies. And it is not a medical diagnosis. So uh, hopefully that makes sense uh, to you that we're, I'm not you know, uh, doing anything along those lines. And then let's see, come on. Uh, obviously the Wave Watch is a larger watch. It's a tool. And it is so important with the speaker on the back. And that's because it allows cells to absorb the waves and the vibration. And basically the idea is very simplistic. One cell begins to vibrate, the next cell starts to vibrate and the next, and then it just zips through your body at 4.3 times the speed of sound. And it attempts to rebalance your system. We also have uh, a recording today and um, this is for Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. And you have to go to the Facebook group and join it. And uh, you can't get in unless you join it, is my understanding. I haven't looked at it in the last week or so, but you can't get in unless you join. So pass that around. And there should be about uh, you know 15 to 20 different uh, programs saved there. So I have a new code this week. Uh, when I first set up my workshops, I could allow 20 different um, weekly sessions and those sessions have expired. I've gone through all of them. And so I had to assign a new code. So hopefully everybody saw that new uh, email and the date and the times and the code that will last for evidently another 20 weeks. Um, I didn't know that I had to keep giving you different ID numbers. Yeah, I don't think I got that. But you were able to get in? Um, I got this link. Uh -huh. Perfect. Okay. So don't know how that exactly works, but my uh, uh, website administrator, you know, sent out a new code just in case. Okay. Okay. So we're going to be talking about sound today and maybe just a little bit of background. And I always learn every time I put one of these together. Uh, of course, when I put the Wave Watch together also, um, I... I learned so much about sound. Uh, we hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. And if those sounds are below 20 hertz, they're infrasound and those above 20,000 are ultrasound. So there's quite a little bit of information about sounds. And we obviously are using acoustical sounds between 20 and 20,000. Now, sound travels in waves. That's why I call it the wave watch, waves and frequencies. And it can be measured in a frequency, which I just explained, but I got this information, you know, from another source. Uh, a child's voice, voice is very high. So they have a higher pitched, a higher frequency. And, you know, men have lower voices, lower frequencies. Um, I, so I think that's kind of interesting just for us to realize that when we listen to some of the sounds on the wave watch that they are going to run the gamut from the lower frequencies to the higher frequencies. Now, just like as adults and humans, we may not be able to hear the 20 uh, hertz or the 20,000. A uh, few of us are gifted to have perfect hearing in all of those ranges. But as we age, we're going to miss some of those lower range or higher range ones, especially uh, uh, as we age. 
So that is important for us to know that sometimes when you listen to the wave watch, you may not hear it the same as somebody else because you're, you know, your hearing is just a little bit different. Um, I had somebody contact me and say that they couldn't hear one of the emotions and sleep frequencies. And then when she got it turned way up to 25, she could hear it but that's a really soft frequency and just to remind you all of the emotional ones are very soft and i have put that in the uh, quick book start guide it says these frequencies are very soft and they're hard to hear but this is where it comes into play we have the amplitude so uh, although this sound isn't loud because we have it turned down it's still plain and your body is feeling it you know you don't have to be beat over the head to feel something on your head. <laughs> Does that make sense? Just like a sound on your wrist, you don't have to have it up just as loud as it'll go for your body to feel it. So again, we do have that taken care of the way that I designed the watch. Um, I wanted to put just a little bit more in. It is in my booklet, and hopefully some of you have read the last page of the booklet, but hearing begins in the womb long before birth. And I just thought it was so fascinating. I really didn't know that, you know, when we're in the in the womb that uh, the mother's, um, you know, stomach is like a drum. Um, and those echoes are vibrating and vibrating. And so it actually could be very loud in the womb for us. We just don't know it. So it's very uh, interesting that we hear from birth or way long before birth. And then hearing or sound is the last thing that we hear before we pass away. And again, that was new information for me. So lots of ways that we hear sound and uh, different times that we hear sound that I really didn't know. And I just thought this was a really cute picture. Uh, this is another way of way, way we hear sound and it just kind of shows you again, the infrasound and the ultrasound, the auditory field and our conversation area is right in the one to 2000 hurts. So um, looks like I need to turn off, turn, put my phone in airplane mode. Sorry about that. So anyway, this is our conversation area and our auditory field. This kind of gives us a chart I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, again, uh, this, this is a, a information about that chart and it just shows the hearing threshold that we do have. I was kind of surprised to see that people that are 23 to 44 year olds, about a quarter of them have some hearing loss. We actually have more hearing loss as we age. And I know a lot of that has to do with the sounds that we're around and the jobs that we do or the jackhammers that we're around or the loud music that we listen to blaring and it just goes on and on and on. So, uh, but I was still surprised that uh, about a quarter of people uh, have hearing loss at a younger age. Um, we, again, we can't necessarily hear the highest frequencies, but I thought this was an interesting site. I don't know if anybody's inter interested in it, but ultrasonic ringtones, you can test the highest frequency you can hear at that website. I didn't get to try it, but I thought it was worth passing on and I'm gonna try it later. I typically have a hard time with lower sounds, not the high sound, so we'll see. Some of you might like to try that out. Now, to get down to business today, uh, the wave watch and frequencies for the ear. I've already said, I know some, some of you are still coming on, but I'm a deaf person. I was born completely deaf in one ear. And I had been told, you know, the phrasing I remember from a child is that the stirrup and the anvil, one of those was missing so that I didn't have any vibration in that ear. Uh, and so again, this is why this is really uh, interesting to me to try to develop something that circumvents that. Because if I had to hear perfect, or if we had to hear perfect as, as a, you know, humans to be able to use this tool, it wouldn't work very well. 
So that's why I think I'm very excited that I was able to come up with something because we can hear so much through and feel through our bones and our skin. So I'll be talking about that in the next slide. But these are some uh, frequencies and hopefully you've seen them. Deafness, detox and limps. Uh, there's about 10 different ideas. And again, I've, I've mentioned this before. It's just a little bit different example. But if it says like the tinnitus or tinnitus two, and some people say tinnitus, tinnitus two, those particular divisions are just telling us that it's a different grouping of frequencies, just like a different song or a singer singing the same song in a different key. So something in one group might be right, a little bit more Hard than to see group number two. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to mute yourself as you come in, say, oh. sometimes I can catch that, but we'll see if we can oh, mute ourselves. <laughs> Everybody muted again. And then this is a picture of the eardrum and some of the parts that are supposed to work for us. So very, very important. Let me see if I can pause a minute and try to mute us. Their date to finish the inspection. Okay, so I think I got everybody muted again. So now I'll, I'll get back to share that screen there. We'll see where we're at, hopefully. We'll be back there again. Okay, hey, can everybody still hear? See me? Let me know if you can't. It's just not in full screen mode. So we're seeing the slides on the left. There we go. All right. So um, please try to mute yourself as you come in. We still have people coming in, but I really appreciate you coming in. And don't forget, this is available on Facebook and you have to join the private group, Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. I think that's what we've all kind of become is frequency fanatics because anybody that's kind of gotten involved in the Wave Watch really tends to wear it a lot and learn a lot about different ideas. So here we go, trying to get to the next slide. So the ear, I'd already showed that one. These are some areas that we hear in. Obviously, this kind of shows how we hear. But just like I mentioned, we are circumventing that because your skin absorbs vibrations through the wave watch speaker bypassing the ear. Um, and according to a famous audiologist, all of our bones as well as our skin is involved in hearing. When we talk, our skull even vibrates and sends sound waves through the spine into the rest of the body, mainly through the bones. And then our skin is just the largest organ there is and absorbs uh, vibrations through there. So we are bypassing that because like I mentioned, it's very sad to think that so many of us can't hear. And if this particular tool was reflecting on our ability to hear, I don't think it would work as well. And I have seen other tools that, you know, people have to have headphones on and they're wearing them all day and they're, you know, attached to their computer or they're attached to something on their wrist that's hooked to the internet, you know, those kind of things. So I was really pleased to be able to bring you a different solution for bypassing sound that you don't have to hear. So I want to start with kids and ear infections. Obviously, if you just read this right here, and I took this off a of WebMD, um, this sends more kids to the doctor than any other ailment. So uh, very inf informative that we have such a hard time with infections from all different sources. So the Wave Watch uh, has support on it. So here's one of my testimonies. And this little cutie, uh, can you see the box for the Wave Watch? Do you recognize that? Uh, this is Paul and um, he had an earache and his mother Courtney told me, and she does happen to work for me, that's how this worked out so well, that she usually does a colloidal silver and garlic oil. There was no relief and he was still crying. So I decided to do the Wave Watch on ear fungal infections. He was all better and asleep in less than 10 minutes. So he slept with it on and the earache never came back. 
So Paul came to my office a couple of times and was able to uh, fold some boxes for me. And so some of you have some boxes that were preciously folded by a six-year-old and that doesn't have anything to do with child labor. He was paid. <laughs> so we're having such fun with that. Uh, but it's very important to see that the Wave Watch does work for that. Now, here's another one. This is an adult saying that um, uh, given us some information about an, a fungus that she flushed out, the medical, the doctor put, uh, flushed it out. She put a steroid in the left ear that she had to keep in for two weeks and she would come back and do the other ear in two weeks. But when I returned, I was shocked when she told me it was the worst ear. She'd struggled for over two years with the problem in the ear and she had treated it less and less than a year on the so-called worst ear. She used the Wave Watch on the ear fungus and the whole program reportedly for two weeks. And when I returned, she said I didn't have the fungus anymore and that she wasn't going to touch it, no need to treat it. So I thought the last line was very important. Avoid this method of treatment, use the Wave Watch. Thanks, Lolly. I don't know if you're on today. So the Wave Watch has been very interesting to be able to uh, help with different kinds of infections. So these are some things that people are able to use. Basically, they can play ear fungus and that one does happen to be in the kids icon. I put that there because so that mothers could find it very quickly in the middle of the night if they needed to. And again, don't forget that that's the worst or, or the main problem with you know doctor visits with kids is ear problems. So ear fungus is in the kids, but then you could also play the entire candida molds and fungus folder. Now, sometimes these infections are not um, at all um, yeast mold fungus. They could be bacteria. So you would want to also try the bacteria folder if that wasn't uh, working for you. Now, how long does it take? I do not know. Uh, Lolly played hers for a couple of weeks. Our other testimony was maybe 10 minutes that he went to sleep and then he did wear it uh, that night. So it could be a different range of time. Give it time to work, but the minimum time that was suggested when you work with frequencies is about eight minutes. So that's why those are on the watch at eight minutes each. And then you can decide whether you want to loop them or play them uh, all night long or do some different things with them. Now, sometimes people have swimmer's ear and uh, even your headphones causing that moisture, don't forget can be connected with swimmer's ear. And that's the bacteria combination. It might be a little bit more uh, bacteria, but you never know. It might be the fungus too. You could use some eardrops or you could try the Wave Watch because there is a specific uh, frequency set for swimmer's ear. Now, earwax is a big story. I kind of mentioned it last week. It was kind of off target just a little bit, but I just had a terrible experience with it. And I had to go to an uh, ear doctor to have some wax taken out. And uh, she said that this year was an extremely bad year for uh, having problems with earwax with all the allergies. So that a lot of people are having more and more buildup with that. Now she kind of, you know, just off the top of her head, just basically said that a combination of hydrogen peroxide and vinegar, and I think she said water would be uh, her favorite suggestion to try to flush those out. Uh, I looked through lots of recipes and there are so many things to do for removing earwax. Sadly, the Wave Watch does not remove earwax. And that's what my problem was. So I tried one of those things that another um, audiologist had told me to use and it plugged up my ear completely. And actually when I got up the next morning, I was deaf, I couldn't hear anything. So that was pretty scary. And then when I went to a second audiologist, she said, well, whatever you used, which was an oil based with hydrogen peroxide in it, which was why that was kind of scary. So that was uh, plugging my ear up and she described it like peanut butter. 
And so then that made perfect sense. So she had a tool to just suck it out very quickly. So I just wanted to mention that and say that the Wave Watch does not take care of earwax, but that is one of the major problems that we're having, especially this, this year with all of these allergies, according to an audiologist. She has done more earwax removal this year than she's done in her 20 years of practice. So I think that kind of speaks for itself. So be very careful when you look up any recipes to try to get that ear wax out. And I actually bought something and uh, used it as the directions said, and that was what plugged my ear up. So I just want to caution you and be really careful, but be aware that that can cause some problems. Another huge problem is this, just like the statement says, cauliflower ear. So a lot of our athletes especially wrestlers could have some trouble with it. Their ear gets bruised and bumps, but I didn't really realize how it makes them so much more prone to ear damage because they get more infections and they can lose their hearing. So the Wave Watch doesn't have, quote unquote, a uh, frequency set for cauliflower ear. It just has several things like ear infections, ear diseases. And I would work through all of those if you have had some damage to your ear through any type of, of uh, uh, you know, sports or, or accidents or whatever's going on. But make sure that you try more than one idea just because you may have a medical quote unquote diagnosis doesn't mean that that's the frequency that is going to work for you. That's why we have several frequencies and I've already made kind of a playlist for you so that you can just run all of those and see if there's one that speaks to your body or changes or has some success. Now, uh, the tinnitus again, the tinnitus, um, basically, um, it's saying that that could be related to hearing loss or the hearing loss could be related to the earwax buildup, spending too much time in a noisy place. I think it's all over the uh, internet that they really don't know what it is uh, that causes this. Uh, they don't know if it's a condition or a symptom of something else. And so therefore they do not know how to work with it. But I have been so excited because I have several people who have given testimonies on this particular problem with their ears. So these are some of the testimonies and you may be able to add one at the end, but uh, I'd love to just let you know that uh, people have tried it. And there is a video on my website uh, wavewatch.com. I had a little trouble a couple times I've ran videos on this presentation and the sound wasn't there. So I didn't play the video today, but you can go there if you want to speak uh, to see that. But, you know, uh, Nora is saying her video speaks for itself. I felt my problem go away in half an hour that I had had for years. It seems about 90% better. And then another one, I have had crickets and ringing my ears for 25 plus years. I was 50% better with a few minutes on the prototype. So what is it going to take you time-wise to run through all of the ideas about hearing or ears and that kind of thing? So run through all of them. It could be the, the tinnitus, the tinnitus ones that work for you, but it might be the ear disease that takes away your crickets and ringing in your ears. And we always go over this, gals and guys, we always go over this. Don't forget, turn off your Wi-Fi. Stay away from it as long as you can. Don't have your phone up to your ear. Don't put it right beside your bed when you sleep at night. Put it as far away from you as you can. Put it on airplane mode and the list goes on and on. So, but I think that is a huge, huge connection to some of the problems that we're having today. So you uh, could also run the EMF and I actually did forget to, you know, put that on a slide, but you could run the EMF and the radiation detox too. And that might be helpful for some people. We don't know, but it's not going to take you anything but eight minutes of time to check it out and see. Um, <clears throat> I had a lady that uh, sent me a testimony in the second paragraph. I hate to edit people's, you know, testimonies, but uh, she's used it almost daily since she got it. She had tinnitus for at least 15 years, and uh, it was sounding like crickets in her head, and it was hard to get to sleep. Uh, she's used the therapy no less than four hours, and I used it for an hour at a time, 
And she said her noise went away completely for at least two weeks. And then some of it came back at 10% from what it used to be. And she hardly notices it all. And she'll keep trying it periodically to see if she gets back to zero. So again, on that one, she's going to try some other things and kind of be, you know, digging just a little bit deeper and see if there's anything else that she could do for that particular problem. But again, that's a long time to have that. Um, I think it's very important to know that we have had success, but it doesn't mean that it's 100% and then it's gonna help everybody. So um, again, um, one author says that sound frequencies might help about 70% of the people, 70% of the time. But there's so many things that I've included on the wave watch. Hopefully you'll find several things that you can use. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit on this next slide and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be reading it for you. If most, most of you are just reading it really quickly, quickly as we go along, but uh, frequencies may fine tune the muscles in the inner ear. So your inner ear has muscles and hearing loss, they say, now I got this from My Sound Therapy and it is a company that uses frequencies a little bit differently. Again, these are some that you have, uh, you know, you're having to put um, ear muffs on, you know, you're going to have to cover your ears and that kind of thing to hear the sound right through your ear. And they are saying that your ear has muscles that will actually start vibrating and begin to strengthen and help the ear mechanism to uh, interpret sound. So I thought that was really interesting that those two muscles are beginning to move just a little bit better. And then in this particular line, I was, uh, you know, very interested in it because the hammer and the stirrup muscles, and I'm missing one of those. That's why I'm completely deaf in one ear. But you know what? I have hope that, hey, maybe something will start working in there one of these days. You never know. So these two muscles, we need to help, you know, get those tightened up, get them, you know, doing some acrobatics, get them to moving so that some of our damage might be improved or there's less uh, problems with our hearing as we age. Wouldn't it be nice to uh, be continually able to improve our hearing or protect it. And so the Wave Watch does have some of those frequencies on it. And then here's another reason, uh, another explanation, just a little bit different, it says that ear muscles for the tinnitus could be firing repetitively in the absence of sound. So that pathway gets stuck in an on position and it just keeps firing. So I thought this was some good wording, you know, for us to kind of remember. So that's how the Wave Watch is working. It's trying to get the correct sound frequency in there so that that fades away and it doesn't happen like that. We have rebuilt, hopefully, or we, so we're trying to uh, rebuild a pathway so that it doesn't keep firing all the time. So who knows how much of that will do. Another idea that's on the Wave Watch with several testimonies is the Meniere's disease. Uh, and this is a lot of fluid in the inner parts of your ears. So you get ringing, dizziness, hearing loss, uh, lots of um, problems uh, with people um, falling, hitting their heads, having other energy, uh, other problems with it. So uh, it, it says, again, this is from uh, WebMD, that you may need to have surgery to stop the symptoms. And I actually do know a couple of people who have had surgery for Meniere's disease, and I'm not saying that it was 100% successful. Uh, it, it may have helped some, but it did not. It was not the be all end all. And I'm not saying that the Wave Watch is the be all end all either. It's just much, much easier to try it and work with it at $400 cost than it is to have a surgery of any kind. And obviously it's acoustical sound. Uh, they're not going into your ear, into your possibly your brain. I don't know how far they go, you know, uh, but much, much less invasive. So, uh, you know, reach out to people that you have that, or, you know, your friends that might have Meniere's disease, this might be a really good thing to try for them. Now, this is a testimony and I actually have to say, she's one of my lovely, lovely relatives um, that she gave me a testimony for at least a year. She'd had a cough 
uh, every afternoon about three o'clock for a couple of hours and her cough was gone in two or three sessions. And um, I know that she told me she just looked up lingering cough. Can you believe if you haven't seen it, there's a frequency called lingering cough. Now, here's the more exciting part that we're talking about. Even more exciting, her dizziness and tinnitus was gone. For the first time in about five years from having been diagnosed with Meniere's, I finally feel normal. Not living on the edge of dizzy is great. I'm loving the watch and the results I have experienced are great. And she had had such huge problems. She'd fallen you know, flat on her head getting out of the big four wheel drive pickup when she was hospitalized for that. And, you know, it just went on and on some of the accidents she was having from that dizziness. So again, reach out if you know anybody that's got some uh, hearing problems that you think this might be uh, worth a try. Um, the autosclerosis, uh, I have a picture of this. I don't have a frequency that says that exactly that word, but if you know that somebody has been diagnosed with the autosclerosis, that might be where you would specifically make sure you go through all of the frequency sets that I showed you that are in the booklet that are available. There's 10 different ones. Um, maybe the ear diseases, the ear, uh, ear problems would be very helpful for this particular problem, but you don't know. It also might be the one that's the tinnitus, you know? So um, try them all, but this is another one that I didn't see a, a particular heading for. Uh, I do have another testimony and uh, thank uh, the internet for, you know, great uh, images on this particular one, but uh, this is the one I'm crying about now. And Joy, I don't know if you're on today, but this was posted after last week on uh, the Facebook uh, Frequency Fanatics, Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. And someone left testimony. I was wearing a hearing aid in both ears. I went to the organ file ear and I have run it often. I no longer wear my hearing aids. My hearing is not perfect, but so much better. While working on our taxes one evening, I got a strong sensation in my right ear. It felt as though something was moving inside my ear. I didn't, it, it didn't last long, but I did think to check my wave watch and saw that the tinnitus was the program running at that specific time. So you see what I'm saying? She ran all of those and I would have thought maybe the deafness one, you know, but she ran that one. And now she has made a change in her hearing aids. And Joy, I just want to say that that just thrilled me so much because, you know, I've been mentioning a couple of times that I, I am missing a part supposedly in one of my ears in my left ear. Wouldn't that be something if my hearing would improve? And you actually gave me some great enthusiasm for uh, continuing to work on that. So thanks, Joy. It's perfect. Uh, vertigo. Uh, we have lots of problems with vertigo. Uh, people are actually coming in my office learning to do some exercises and I don't think I got that particular slide uh, put into this presentation, but you can look up um, exercises. There's several of them for the crystals that may have gotten loose in your head. And of course, some of them are just gonna tell you to lean forwards and backwards or sideways. Some of them they're gonna tell you to lay on the bed, turn different directions, and they've got a little loop on there. So I, I couldn't do a good job on showing these exercises to you. But we actually have frequencies for vertigo and dizziness. And I did have a testimony on that that was given uh, verbally on one of the, the uh, uh, Zoom calls. And I don't know if that person is here that could uh, go over that one again, but it was just basically that uh, someone that they loaned the wave watch to, they knew that they ran it for 24 minutes because they ran vertigo, dizziness, and uh, I think diz uh, two vertigo ones and dizziness. And um, the next morning the guy came back and his vertigo seemed to be gone. He'd already been doctoring with it for about six months. So if that uh, testimony could be written down 
please uh, email that to me if you if you catch me or if you happen to hear me on this one. But uh, you know, it was a great testimony. And 24 minutes was all it took that guy when he had been doctoring for six months. So again, I, I just want to say pass the wave around uh, wave watch around to people that you you know and share some of those ideas. Now, this one is the last one. We're tying it up. We're going to be able to talk and say hi to each other here in just a minute. But um, I was so enthused to actually find a website. And maybe I'll see if I can move this for you to see it better. Um, this website is hearingsol.com. Uh, and they had a great list. If you want to make your hearing better, the following methods can help you. And here I am complaining about my ear, telling you I can't hear. And look at all these ideas that maybe I wasn't even aware that I could do. Um, so the physical exercises and meditations, uh, exercises and aerobics related to hearing, those were the ones that I wasn't really in tune with as much as maybe I should have been. So it was really interesting to read that article. Uh, brain games and exercises, ear exercises and yoga training programs, apps and games. Of course, there's diagnosis and treatment methods. I go once every three or four years sometimes to get my hearing checked to see if there's any changes in it. So I went just the other day, like I mentioned, and I now have a definitive number of what they're telling me for my hearing. So I can have it rechecked again to see if anything has changed. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, we could do some acupuncture. Uh, which I have tried, but uh, I thought I had a little success and um, probably my fault. I'm not sure, sure that I stayed with it. Um, also proper intake of nutritious diet and supplements. So all of those are explained more in depth on the website hearingsol.com with articles and how to improve hearing. So I thought that was a great way to tie this up. I am so thankful that some of you are reaching out and um, being on the zoom call today that you hopefully have tried some of these if you haven't tried anything with the ear um, maybe there are some other ideas that you have tried that you can share with us in just a few minutes but again thanks for uh, working with the ears and passing that information around to people so anyway i'm going to stop sharing and just uh, try to open it up and let people say hi and any testimonies or anything that you would like to share would be perfect. Linda? Yes, go ahead. This, this is Lolly. I wanted to add, um, I, I guess I thought that I had uh, sent a testimony on this, but I had otosclerosis. Oh, it's been over 30 years ago. And um, anyway, um, I had to have surgery and I did this. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, I had to have surgery and I went to Oklahoma and went to have the surgery and I received all but about 10% of my hearing um, back. But then um, I waited too long for the other ear and also developed otosclerosis and um, so my hearing was only like 10% from that ear. And then uh, it was, gradually was getting worse. I had to go to hearing aids. Um, and, but I, when I, since I received the watch, cause I had gotten to where I was not hearing anything in my left ear and uh, unless I wore the hearing aids. But then um, after I got the wave watch, I started playing it more and, I started being able to hear in my left ear. So, um, and, and it continues to improve. And I, I just keep playing it over and over again and it, it is helping. So. Are you playing the whole folder? Yes, I play the, yeah. and actually sure. I, I, I play it. And, and since the lady with the testimonial of wearing hearing aids and now doesn't need to hear, wear them <laughs> to, to ah. hear. Um, I've started playing it now twice in the morning and twice in the evening. Yes, the whole folder. Oh. And then um, also, I'm, I'm waiting to see if I give you another testimonial because I have problems with cataracts. 
And I've noticed a change in my eyes on that as well. So I'll be letting you know how that follow up. Perfect, kind of because that'll be another Zoom call is all about eyes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if I didn't see that one just to put it in today, but I had one testimony from you. So thank you for adding to that so that sure. your hearing is improving. Oh, I yes. mean, can it get any better? <laughs> thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> all right. Anybody else with some information? I think you can unmute yourself. You would like to add. Mine is more of a question on the tinnitus part. I've been using mine every day, you know, not for hours every day, but I haven't had any luck with the tinnitus. And I and I was listening to you earlier say, well, try all the ear disorders and is that what what you would suggest them because yes. the tinnitus is doing nothing mm -hmm. yes so try them all start at the top of the folder and play through all of them then you also might go to the ear fungus one which is in a different folder and then the you know play fungus you know that would be a good one just play through all of those too we, we do okay. not know everybody is individual and so we have to treat ourselves as individuals and you know sometimes that's why we turn to natural uh ideas is because it can be individualized just a little bit more for us you know and uh, you know medication is not, not as as individualized you know so you are making the choices to individualize it with some of those particular ideas perfect so kathleen keep us up on that let us know if anything changes when you try a few more ideas a question I have is, is eight minutes in each of those protocols enough to know if you're getting some effect or because or, yes. there are a lot of protocols. That, how do I know which one is or isn't working? Again, if I have put them in a folder together, like all the ear ones are together, they are similar, you know, and they have some similarities. Some of the frequencies are just a little bit different. And I always describe them as a song that, uh, you know, it's a different singer singing in a different key, but you might, you know, kind of move, groove a little bit more when somebody sings the song, uh, you know, in a different way, just like your body might respond to one of those frequencies differently. And it doesn't mean that it's the one that quote unquote, you've been labeled with medically, it might be ear diseases that would be helpful instead of tinnitus. Okay. Okay. Does that help? Yep, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, one other idea, Linda, this is Vienna. Uh, sure. Someone in one of the earlier things that you read, I believe, was I happened to notice I felt a sensation and I looked down and saw what it was. So that'd be my recommendation. Sometimes we, at least I have spent a fair bit of my life dampening my observations. I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to know, you know, or something. So as I'm learning to tune into my body more, I'm noticing more and then I can do more with it. So the lady that was just talking, just tune in and maybe in that eight minutes, you'll feel something. And okay. then you can jot it down and go, whoa, I think that might've been the thing. And then you can play that one longer. And Linda, am I right in remembering That's that perfect. You, yeah. you can't, oh, you can't overdose on this stuff. What you don't need goes through you like a song. So it, you know, Hey, great. Thank you. <laughs> and Kathleen, um, this is one of my cutest little testimonies. I had a gentleman call and he bought the wave watch for his wife with Parkinson's. And then, you know, he, we were talking on the phone and he kind of got embarrassed. You could tell, and he cleared his throat. He was trying to figure out what to say. And then he just, you know, burst out and he goes and we sleep really close together oh <laughs> and then he busted out one more time and he said i could feel her frequencies when she had the wave watch on isn't that amazing that is amazing oh. so he continued and he said and i woke up the next morning and my feet didn't hurt and i'm going oh that, that's really neat you know and he goes oh no you don't understand they've hurt for 15 years I've oh. taken medication for 15 years, you know, and so he was feeling the frequencies for Parkinson's oh. and there's something about neuropathy nerves, something about the nerves in his feet. So who would have thought to play that? And it made his feet pain go away. 
And he contacted me again. And in two weeks, he was off his medication. That's fabulous. So okay. think outside the box. Okay. And do you think bedtime is one of the best times and just let it play all night or till it runs out of battery? Sure is. Or if you're setting a lot or reading a book or, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, driving is a great time too. I mean, I drive long distances, sometimes eight hours of driving. That's one of my favorite times to play it. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh huh. I hope everybody's seeing in the chat. Uh, Susan is telling us that she had a painful earache this week. I use the Wave Watch along with MMS that is sodium chloride for about three days, and they're fine. Perfect. All of those natural things that we can do are so important. Any other testimonies of any kind? It doesn't have to be, or any questions or anything I could answer. I think everybody's here. Um, I don't know that I have any other uh, testimonies that I could think of. I tried to, to jam the testimonies in the uh, uh, presentation, but I do know that sometimes people are a little bit confused on, well, you know, why don't I need to hear it, you know? And some of uh, the original Wave Watches have uh, plugins for earplugs or ear, you know, that you can put in your ear so that you can hear frequencies. And so I have had a couple of people that did go ahead and uh, they, they had some or they purchased some, you know, uh, phones that would go in their ears. Um, that's not the word I'm trying to say, ear. Uh, and uh, then they could hear those frequencies. But when you really start hearing those frequencies, they are very loud and clanky and all over the place. You know, just a few of the emotional frequencies are very soft. So to me, it was more damaging to your ears than anything if you played that a lot. So again, the whole concept of the Wave Watch is to back off of hearing it in your ear and let your body, your skin and your bones do the trick of just passing that all over your body and rebalancing your sound, making those muscles work just a little bit better in your ears so that our hearing stays um, better as we age. And that's a you know, that's a big thing for us all. Anything else that anybody wants to add? Linda, this is Audrey Bosley. I sent, Hi, Audrey. You, an e Hi. I sent you an email on this. Um, my Wave Watch runs like for a few minutes and then it just shuts off. Right, and I, I did email you back, I thought, so. No, I yeah. didn't. And so, we'll, and so we'll um, uh, take care of that. I ask how long you'd had it. Do you know how when you got yours, Audrey? Mine was uh, like the prototype original. Okay, so yeah, you've had it well over a year then. So you yeah. know, yeah. Okay, no, I didn't get an email back, but I'll look again. Okay, all right. Okay. So anybody else have any comments? We're gonna close this off, I guess. I don't want to waste people's time. If, if does anybody have any questions? We're we're doing okay. Perfect. All right. Sometimes we go to 1120 or 1130 or something like that. But anyway, I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you uh, taking your time today. And uh, again, you can refer friends and people to Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. Thanks. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.